Tony Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Monday, August 6th, 2018. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Steve Hellwagon. Steve, as we sit here Monday morning, um, I'll admit I've gone back and forth on this. I just have to, you know, when more information comes in, I, I process information and change my mind. Initially, I thought Urban Meyer was going to lose his job. I never thought he should. But as you and I talked on the show with Dan Rubin last Thursday, I thought that because they put him on paid administrative leave, usually that's a precursor to termination. Um, but I've now gone back on that. I think he's going to keep his job. Um, you've always thought he was going to keep his job. Um, I'm, I'm assuming, Steve Hellwagon, you still think Urban Meyer is going to keep his job, correct? Yes, I think that uh, they put together this Blue Ribbon Committee of ex-U.S. attorneys and the former Ohio House Speaker, Joanne Davidson, and I just think that uh, they have uh, created a, a, a committee, and I don't think they're, they've took the books on this by any means, but if this committee of people uh, comes back with very little evidence against Urban Meyer, uh, I think that you would say that... Uh, if these people couldn't find something worthwhile of firing him, nobody ever would. So I think that uh, that's going to be ultimately uh, they kick it back to President Drake and the trustees, and I think that will be uh, probably the final determination. Even Paul Feinbaum this morning was saying he thinks Urban Meyer is going to keep his job. He's been, <laughs> he's been out there like leading the charge to get Urban fired, and you know, of course he had to you know, take his digs and everything. But uh, I, was, I was watching Feinbaum this morning on uh, Greenberg's show. He did make a good point, I'll say this. Now, he was doing it in a flippant way, but he said a good sign for Ohio State um, is that the committee came out, Steve, and said, we're going to have this wrapped up in 14 days. And Feinbaum, is, you know, he, is, he is a lawyer, and he said you, that tells him that they already know Unless something else like it comes out of the blue, they know what their decision is going to be already, or they wouldn't have said that. And he thinks that he thinks that that bodes well. Very, the fact that they came out and said we're going to have this done within 14 days could be less. He thinks that bodes well, really well for Ohio State. Yeah, I think so too. I think uh, there is a finite amount of uh, information out there. Really, I mean, I think you, you take uh, Urban Meyer's cell phone, his computer, his tablet, uh, whatever you have, uh, email of his official OSU accounts and uh, devices. And it seems to me that this investigative uh, team, uh, part of what they do is uh, forensic type investigations of these type of materials. So this is their, uh, this is their standard, what they do. So my guess is they're going to get to the bottom of this pretty quickly and uh, pass on their recommendations and their evidence to the committee and the committee will uh, then share the higher points or the finer points of it uh, with uh, President Drake and the trustees and the decision will be made at that time. And a lot of people across the country who, who frankly don't care about Courtney Smith, they just hate Urban Meyer, want Urban Meyer fired over this. Um, I keep coming back to this. The cops were involved the entire way. There's no cover-up. Um, and if you believe Urban's statement on Friday, which I thought was great what he did, I know other people, like Reese Davis came out and thought that was dumb that he did that. It was going to hurt him. I'm thinking, if anything, that's going to help him. Um, but if you believe his statement, and I can't imagine if he was lying in that statement, Ohio State wouldn't have corrected it by now. If Urban Meyer reported to his, his superiors, Gene Smith, whoever he needed to report it to, if the police were involved, that's a yes and yes. He reported to his superiors the police were involved. How could he be held responsible for this? Was he supposed to conduct his own investigation? I just don't get what the – other than the fact they just hate Urban Meyer, I just don't understand what the other side is saying on this. Well, I think our friend Bax really uh, crystallized the thoughts of a lot of people in the bucket column that he yes. wrote for our site on Sunday. I think yes. he really laid it out about how this has been ignorantly uh, covered, portrayed, uh, by all parties concerned, including Urban Meyer and Ohio State. And I think Urban, and, and I, uh, the, the term he used uh, about Urban's behavior in Chicago, uh, just thought he was going to big boy this or something or the other. My, my comment has been he was just going to get up there and wing it because <laughs> cause that's exactly how it seemed. I don't think he set out to tell falsehoods, but... Man, oh, man, you know, I mean, how do you disavow any knowledge of 2015 when the evidence is everywhere that you knew all about it? And so, and that's, you know, charges, smarges is what I say on that. Pattern of behavior, 
uh, you know, can he look this guy in the eye and know that uh, he's a good guy? Is he a bad guy? You know, you go back to 2009. He allegedly shoved his pregnant wife against the wall. We don't know, as Zach Smith is now saying, he was strictly defending himself and warding her off in these various incidents. You don't know. We don't know what the, the truth is. To say that, oh, no charges were filed, to me that's immaterial. This has been a pattern of behavior between the two of them, both probably equally culpable if you really come right down to it. So why was this person allowed to be on the staff once these issues crop back up, he should have been put on a paid administrative leave to try and figure this out. And people say, oh, no charges were fucked. That is immaterial to me. I don't care. I think you need to, where there's smoke, there's fire, particularly with domestic violence. I use that just as a very trite analogy. I think that this was something that needed to be dealt with on a more serious level than to just call him off the road, ask two questions. Oh, no charges were filed. Let's continue with business as usual. We got to play Penn State this week. You know, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. And Urban didn't want to answer that, and that's why he started his own alternate reality. It seems when he got up there in Chicago and uh, was trying to smear Brett McMurphy, and uh, you know when he waved his, you were standing there. When he said the ship has sailed and he waved his hand at Brett McMurphy, a chill went down my spine. It's like you don't get into a pissing match with somebody who buys ink by the barrel. You just don't do that. that of course, that's an old newspaper analogy, but you're never going to outlast that. So, um, you know, has Brett McMurphy made some mistakes? Yes. Was Brett McMurphy put on this path by somebody who had an axe grind with Ohio State, Urban Meyer, or Zach Smith? or all of the above. Yes, very clearly. Somebody with a knowledge of his past put Brett McMurphy on this on this path. But you know what? It doesn't matter. What they're looking into is Urban Meyer's handling of the situation and his public comments. Those are the things that they're looking at right now. What he knew, when he knew it, how he acted, what he said. And I thought his statement on Friday was as close to him coming out and saying, I wasn't prepared. Yes, I did. I was not truthful. I mean, that's it. And his unfortunate, you know, his body language, his comments uh, for, you know, I would say he dismissed domestic violence, but he was just very cavalier about the way he handled that. And, uh, so I think we're moving closer to a resolution. And, again, I, I, I just can't imagine a scenario where he loses his job over this, but it could cost him a few games. What do you make of the news that came out yesterday on Reddit that um, Brett McMurphy had edited his Facebook story? That's where he posts the stories because he's between jobs right now. He's been hired at Stadium but can't start there till next week because of his non-compete with ESPN who laid him off 18 months ago. And, i got to give the man credit on this. He's been getting paid by ESPN this entire time. They thought he'd find a new job, and instead he's kind of found a way to keep reporting, but have ESPN keep paying him. Um, so good for him on that. Um, what do you make of, I guess, some uh, Internet sleuths finding out that he edited his story many, many times. Initially said Zach Smith was arrested. Then it said investigated and arrested. Then he took out arrested. I mean, he edited it a lot. And we all know as journalists, once you edit a story that's been published, you need to let the readers know, unless you're making a small little typo correction, you've got to let the re- readers know you're making a correction to your story. So that, I don't know if that helps or hurts Urban Meyer as far as the committee. If anything, I'm sure it would help him, but it might be irrelevant is what I'm saying. But just from a journalistic perspective, what do you make of Brett McMurphy not letting the reader know he was making these edits? Yeah, I think that that uh, is very interesting. As you mentioned within our fraternity or, or our profession, I think that it is – uh, certainly fine to go in if I've misspelled somebody's name or, or left out a word or something. You obviously want to fix that for the readers that come behind. But if something materially has changed with the story, you'd like to point that out for people who read it previously. In our case, we have this the, the great comment section below the story so that we can go in there and uh, say, hey, guys, you know, I, I fixed this part of the story. This is how it now reads, that type of thing. 
I would say ethically that, that if he made material changes and did point them out, uh, that, that is a little bit problematic. I also believe that if he used words such as charged or, you know, arrested or these kind of things, and this was uh, the rationale that, or the, the wording that he was using in questioning to Irvin Meyer and didn't even have his facts straight, if he led Meyer down some path and Meyer was disavowing knowledge of an arrest, well, in that case, he was truthful. You know, how, how, what, what uh, tone was he asking the question? I mean, what was he asking the question on the basis of? And perhaps Meyer was like, just disavowed it because it was a nothing incident in Urban Meyer's mind, although there was something to it. So, you know, I think that there are a lot of uh, questions that, that <laughs> this whole thing every day dredges up new questions. Uh, just yesterday, they put out the release about the process and said they hope to have it done in 14 days. I, I'm not sure. I think that's a target, but I don't think you could promise anybody that something would be done in 14 days if they get into this and find something else. It's like the uh, Jim Trestle thing. They got into it and found something else they weren't weren't looking for. And that's ultimately what cost him his job, the cover-up on the cover-up. So I don't know. I think that, uh, yeah, it it seems like an unethical thing. But, again, I think (laughs) take the Smiths and Brett McMurphy out of this. I think it's, it's what's Urban Meyer done with the information he had why did he keep this guy on staff after repeated incidents? And, uh, you know, how did he try and cover his tracks uh, by trying to, as our guy back said, big boy everybody in Chicago? Yeah, we all can agree Urban did not handle himself well in Chicago. In fact, he handled it poorly, and I'm sure, as you said in the statement, he would like to do it if he could do it all over again. He didn't say this in the statement, but it was, you can pretty much tell. If he could do it all over again, I'm sure he'd handle things much differently in Chicago, either given no comment or just say, yeah, I'm aware of the 2015 incident, but, you know, there was no arrest. And, but no comment would have been good. Um, before I let you go, last thing, you and I are both in agreement that Urban Meyer will get his job back as Ohio State's head coach. Um, I finally come around to your side, Steve, finally. It took me one day to come around to your side, actually. Um, but um, we both agree that Urban Meyer will keep his job at Ohio State. Let me ask you this. When do you think he'll return? I know it's hard to guess. But with the committee saying they hope to have it done in 14 days or less, do you think we could hear something this week? When do you think Urban Meyer will uh, return to coaching this football team? I think the 14 days uh, is probably going to be about right. So I would say this time, uh, in fact, it could be announced two weeks from today, to be very honest with you. Uh, just on a business day, uh, they may uh, have some site, some sort of a press conference at the Fawcett Center or wherever they do those things these days, maybe at the uh, – alumni house or whatever hole that uh, President Drake has been holed up in because he and uh, Gene Smith haven't exactly distinguished themselves with uh, their leadership in this dark hour. So this ongoing dark hour with the Strauss thing, the diving thing, the wrestlers, everything else that's uh, that's popped up, it's not been, uh, not been the best of summers, I think, over there at the Ohio State College. And uh, I think that... Uh, it's uh, one of the TV stations even, you know, put Gene Smith on blast, showed a video of him walking away from their camera and not answering a question. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, he's on a little bit of a hot seat here. So uh, they want to get this right, um, or at least they say they do. My guess is anywhere from two to four games. Uh, two games would be basically a slap on the wrist. I think we'll... <laughs> We'll know how serious this was, depending on how many games he gets. If it goes into a third game, that's TCU. That's that's an important game. Fourth game would be Tulane. Uh, fifth game would be Penn State. You certainly don't want that. So, although bringing him back, the coach's first game back at Penn State just has media circus written all over it, you know. So, I don't know. I think they are in a uh, – in a real tough bind here on this. I mean, the clock, I mean, with each passing day, Dave, with each passing hour, we are an hour closer to real live college football in 2018. And uh, they, they have, you know, the, the as, uh, our, our old friend Mr. Bucknut said, uh, you know, the, the dogs keep barking, but the caravan marches on. And uh, 
You know, that's 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 fact of the matter. They've had three practices without Urban Meyer. Just stop and conjure that for a second. They're off today to move into the hotel, and then they'll be back at it tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, it just uh, it, uh, it is what it is. Great stuff from Steve Hellwagon. Really appreciate it, buddy. And thanks all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I appreciate that as well. Hope everybody has a great day. Let's hear the Buckeye swag, best in band in land. Bye.